how to master the ECG in under five minutes. Now that sounds a bit preposterous, a bit bizarre, a bit mad, and a little bit ambitious. And I'll have to admit, I agree with you, but I think we can do it. So let's go. We take an ECG by placing electrodes on the body. There's six chest leads and there are three limb leads. Whenever charge moves towards a lead, so in that direction, we get a positive deflection. And when it moves away, we see a negative deflection. Now, this concept is central to understanding the ECG. Uh, let's look at one segment of the ECG. The P wave is the first positive deflection. So this will be atrial depolarization. After this, we have the QRS complex, which represents ventricular depolarization. And then we have the T wave, which is ventricular repolarization. Now, if you're wondering where is atrial repolarization, this is embedded within the QRS complex, so we don't see it as a separate wave. The ECG is broken down into different leads, which give us different views of the heart. This is a standard 12 lead ECG. The V1 to V6 are your chest leads. Why are they called the chest leads? Well, because they're placed on the chest. The V1, 2, 3, 4, as you see, they're looking at the anterior portion of the heart and the interventricular septum. This is also why they are called the anteroseptal leads. V5 and V6, however, are looking at the left ventricle and in particular the lateral wall. So we call these the lateral leads. The left ventricle is larger and therefore that is the direction in which the net charge moves. So away from V1 and towards V6, Therefore, the deflections go from negative to positive. Back with the 12 lead ECG, we're now going to look at the limb leads, and these measure electrical activity in the vertical plane. There are only three actual limb leads, and then we have three virtual leads, AVR, AVL, and AVF. The AV stands for augmented vector leads, and these are leads that the machine works out using vectors. Why is there an extra lead too? Well, this is called the rhythm strip, and we use it to assess whether or not the patient is in sinus rhythm. To understand the position, we need to start with lead one. This is going to be our reference point. Lead one looks directly at the patient's heart from their left-hand side. So note, this is the patient's left-hand side. And then lead two is 60 degrees clockwise, and then a further 60 degrees will take you to lead three. Now, <laughs> it's gonna get a bit messy, so hold tight for this one. When we add the augmented vector leads, we can see the AVR is from the right, AVL is from the left, these are both 30 degrees from the horizon, and AVF is looking up from the patient's feet. Now, this looks like a mess and it probably doesn't make a lot of sense, so we're going to now apply this to the ECG. Let's start by looking at lead 2 and AVR. They are looking at the heart from almost opposite directions, and in the ECG, we see an almost inverted picture which makes sense. Look at lead three and AVL. Again, same thing. So if lead two and AVR aren't inverted, there's probably an issue. Well done for making it this far. I know it's quite tough, but I hope you found this useful. In the next part, we're gonna cover how to actually apply this information to an actual ECG. Now, if you want more right now, you don't wanna wait, check out our Instagram. We have a lot of posts out there that I'm sure you'll find helpful. Like, share, subscribe to help us keep doing this. Oh, and if you stuck around this long, check out our website. We have free notes in a bit.